Hello, welcome to this uh, marvelous designer tutorial. This one should be relatively quick. Uh, I did a live stream um, yesterday, um, Saturday, and um, you know I showed a, a little thing that I'd made in MD, and people were curious, so I thought I'd show you know how it was done. Uh, so it was a uh, like a leather uh, footstool poof or whatever they call them, um, and they're ever so easy to make. So we're going to start out with a, an ellipse. So we'll click here to set one up. We're going to go circumference. Uh, where do we go? 1600. Uh, it seems like a lot, but you know, as it's around, it, it's not too bad. And then we'll click OK. Right, so I'm going to move that a little closer to the ground and I'm going to rotate it round. So to rotate it 90 degrees, it exactly i'm gonna uh, start to move the gizmo to rotate and i'm gonna press shift now it doesn't snap to very small increments but it does snap to 90 degrees so when you get around to 90 degrees just let that go okay so we'll move that a bit closer to the ground and then we'll freeze it because i don't want it to be falling or doing anything crazy like that okay so now we need the the sides so we'll create a rectangle and just click into the viewport and of course I want it 1600 because I want it to go exactly around the circumference of my circle and we'll perhaps make it, I don't know, 350 high, uh, maybe 400, there we go and then click OK. So it looks like I've put that a little too low so I'll just grab that and move that upwards and then I'll move this more or less into position okay so now I need to sew it up so I want to sew with the free sew tool so on my sewing tools I'll click free sew and I want to click from the back so that the seam on this thing is going to be at the back so let's click there and I'm going to move to the left and let that finish there we go and then I'll click from there to there and that will sew it up. Now I could just let this uh, run um, and see and it will work um, but to get it into position I can right click on this panel piece and then superimpose uh, side and that should whoops <laughs> no it's not working <laughs> well it is working it's just not working as I wanted it to uh, normally it would just arrange it underneath but it's not quite working uh, let's try under no oh well let's just run the sim and let it do its thing somehow that tends to work perfectly if you've got like a garment you just can put a hem on if you superimpose under it it goes in perfectly but for some reason today it's not working it may be because i have this frozen um it might not like that okay so now we've got the the top and the side uh, we need the bottom so I'm going to select this and copy and paste and I'm going to paste it over the top of our original and that's just so that it appears in 3d space exactly where the top is and I'm going to move that down in the 2d view so I can see and then click into the viewport just be careful um, I've clicked into the viewport and it's selected the original uh, I don't want to move that one, I want to move the bottom one. There we go. You can see it's the bottom one because it's got no seam line on it. There we go, just move that back down a bit. Doesn't matter if it's exact, we're going to move it all anyway. Okay, so now I'm going to sew up um, the bottom and we can do it in exactly the same way. Now, a little tip here is to decide which direction to go, uh, we can look at these crosses on the notches on the seams the notches on the seams so this one is to the left of this point and that indicates to me that i started here and then went in this direction and this one um, is towards this point so it indicates i started there and went in this direction so if i repeat that on the bottom one so the notches end up in exactly the same kind of spots You'll see that comes in and it's exactly right. Okay, 
Right, now, if I unfreeze these, so let's unfreeze that one, and then I'm just going to right click and flip the normal on this one, so that it's pointing in the right direction, and let it sim, there we have it. Now, as soon as I unfreeze this one, it's going to collapse, which is exactly what we don't want to happen. So we turn the sim off and then control Z. Now the trick to this is to change this material. So, oh, that's not material, I'm on the top stitch. So this fabric. So down here we have our physical property and we can change that with a preset in the fabrics folder, or fabrics library. If I slide down to the bottom, we have a bunch of trims. Now all of these work, uh, but they work in slightly different ways. So this first one is the uh, full trim leather. If I drag and drop that onto there, so full grain leather, that's applied to all of my pattern pieces. And now if I unfreeze that and let the sim run, you'll see it holds up under its own weight. I haven't even um, sewed this end up and it's still holding up. So let's segment sew that quickly. There we go. And there we have it. So we can, of course, uh, change that. We can use one of these other le other leathers. So we've got a fusible rigid, which gives you a much more kind of tight uh, angled uh, effect. Uh, in this case, I would probably use a little bit of pressure just to puff it back up again. There we go. Whoops, I only did that on the one uh, pattern piece. Let's do that there. Well, we could use this other one down here, our uh, just our hardware, and that will give us a slightly different um, result again. Uh, so what else? Uh, I did actually sort of split this into panels in the uh, the model I'd done. So let me select these two ends and then right click offset internal line along curved. I'm just going to increase this to three. So I've got four sections and then OK. It will select them for me. Right click, cut and sew. And now I've got four sections, which yeah, we can see because, you know, our uh, our seam lines, our normal seam lines are coming in and showing that up. So that's it essentially. Uh, all I'd really do then is um, you know, set my particle distance to something a little bit more, um, a little bit lower to get a little bit more resolution out of it and to have the, uh, the edges work a little nicer. There we go, even the, the weight is you know, pushing it down and smushing it onto the floor, which is looking nice. Uh, then it's just a question of I'm going to arrange these pieces oops, just into uh, as good a square as I can so that I get a you know, reasonably nice UV out of it when we go to the UV room. Let's right click, uh, rearrange to 2D arrangement and then select them all and fit 0 to 1. There we go. Oops, looks like I moved one. Let's let that sim. There we go. So yes, there you go. That's how you make it like a, a leather sort of cushion uh, or puff, whatever you call them. Um, you can see mine's collapsing now because I messed it around too much. Uh, but if I put it back on the original tough trim there, that should puff back right back up again. Of course it's nice to have some dents and some you know um, inconsistencies around it um, but yeah so that's it that's making like a you know one of those little puff things that you get in front of sofas to put your feet on or you know sit on or, or do whatever uh, so I hope you found that useful if you have any questions uh, please ask me in the comments and uh, I'll talk to you again another time